It's time to sum this specific infinite series, and as is usually the case when you're asked to sum a specific infinite series exactly, there's a cool trick for doing it, and that trick is what makes this video interesting. Looking at this series, we can see that it has really two obvious features. First, all of the denominators are some kind of power of two, and second, while the sign does change on the terms as you go down the series, it doesn't quite alternate. Specifically, it alternates in twos instead of every other term, and that's actually kind of peculiar. It's not really clear how to handle an infinite series with the signs changing like that. It turns out that once we figure out how to handle that, we actually have a pretty straight shot through the whole series. The first step to handling this series is to rewrite all of the denominators explicitly as powers of two. What we notice is that all of the denominators are just the even powers of two. This is the first important realization that will help us sum the series. Now the next step in breaking down this sum is that key one I was talking about earlier where we figure out how to handle that weird sign flipping. The approach that ends up working is to split this infinite series into a sum of two infinite series. The first of the two series consists of terms whose power of two in the denominator is a multiple of four. So 1 over 2 to the 0, 1 over 2 to the 4th, 1 over 2 to the 8th, etc. And the second series simply involves all the rest of the terms. Specifically, this ends up being the terms with 2 to the power of a multiple of 4 plus 2. So we have things like 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 2 to the 6th, 1 over 2 to the 10th, etc. This solves that weird sign changing problem we were having because it splits the overall series into two other series where the sign just alternates, and an alternating sign is something we do know how to handle. Because of that, we can easily write both of the two series we've broken the main series into in summation notation like you see on the screen, where the now just alternating sign is handled by writing negative 1 to the n as usual. The only difference between the two series is, of course, that there's a 4n as the exponent on the 2 in the first series, and a 4n plus 2 as the exponent on the 2 in the second series, we can then factor out the summation symbol without changing the value of the series and start simplifying the expression under the sum. It turns out that the expression that we have under the sum simplifies down quite nicely. The first step is to take a look at the second term. It turns out to be productive to rewrite 2 to the 4n plus 2 as 2 to the 4n times 4. This then allows us to factor out the minus 1 to the n over 2 to the 4n factor from the whole thing, leaving us with an overall factor in front of the series of 5 fourths. We can then write what's left under the sum as negative 1 over 16 all raised to the nth power, at which point we recognize that the infinite series part of what we've got left is just a geometric series evaluated within its radius of convergence, specifically at negative 1 over 16. Remember that a geometric series says that the sum of x to the n from n equals 0 to infinity equals 1 over 1 minus x. From this we can see that the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 over 16 to the nth power must just equal 16 over 17. We can then substitute that in to what we're actually trying to evaluate and we get that the sum we were originally trying to do simply equals 20 over 17. I always find it somewhat astonishing when any kind of infinite sum adds up to something that actually is so understandable. It seems to me like something that easy and understandable and simple just couldn't come out of something so infinite. But nevertheless, it is the case. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least found it interesting. If you did, please consider sharing it with a friend giving it a thumbs up and subscribing.